Happening now, New York is about to have a new governor. What Jamestown residents have to say about Cuomo's resignation. Plus, the latest from county health officials who today confirmed COVID-19 Delta variant spread here locally. Well, today is the peak of the heat and the humidity. We'll talk about how warm it's going to be through the afternoon, plus some showers and storms. We'll talk about it next as the news at noon starts right now. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. New York is about to get its first woman governor. Thank you for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Justin Gould. Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul will take Governor Andrew Cuomo's place in two weeks' time. This after he resigned Tuesday amid impeachment threats after a New York State Attorney General report concluded he sexually harassed 11 women. Hochul has been a member of Cuomo's team since 2014, but has most notably worked quietly behind the scenes. Cuomo never even made mention of her in his book he wrote last year about how he handled the COVID-19 pandemic, though he did write about many of his other top aides. Now, Hochul tweeted Tuesday she agrees with Cuomo's decision to step down, and she said she's ready to serve the people of the Empire State. Hochul will address the uh, assume the role of governor. New York State Majority Leader Andrea Stewart-Cousins will become New York's lieutenant governor. Well, following Governor Cuomo's resignation announcement, we wanted to check in with those on the streets. Haley Potter with our news partner, Erie News Now, heard their thoughts on learning their governor will soon be stepping down. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo resigning Tuesday after a New York Attorney General investigation found he had sexually harassed at least 11 women. I think it was the right thing to do for the state of New York. I also think it was the right thing to do uh, for the governor personally. Assemblyman Andy Goodell says the impeachment process is long, so he believes the governor did the right thing. Some Western New Yorkers we spoke to agree. Morgan Cornell was surprised to hear the news the governor resigned, but happy he did after a growing number of sexual harassment allegations. Especially when he was big on the no tolerance of sexual harassment and then come to find out he was actually committing the acts himself, so it was kind of surprising. Michael Corey was disappointed that even though Cuomo resigned, he maintains his innocence, blaming his behavior on generational differences in workplace behavior. Never crossed the line with anyone. Took too long, I think, you know, it's and seeing that his language didn't seem to convey that, like, he really respected, like, how he made people feel. I think he probably should have stepped down earlier, but I think that uh, many of the allegations might be trumped up politically. Steve Bush, on the other hand, thinks Cuomo should have resigned earlier, but for some different reasons. Lieutenant Governor and Buffalo native Kathy Hochul will take over from Cuomo in two weeks and will become the Empire State's first female governor, something these Western New Yorkers feel is a step in the right direction. I feel like someone from Western New York who knows more about Western New York in particular and how we are over here versus a big city would actually help very well. She'll do fine, absolutely. Yeah, yeah she's a smart woman, a uh, smart person, and uh, I think it's going to be a good transition. Haley Potter, Erie News Now. Haley, thank you. Hochul is expected to address the state this afternoon. You can watch that live right here on WNY News Now, starting at 2 o'clock. Well, Governor Andrew Cuomo's resignation comes after a New York State Attorney General investigation found that he sexually harassed 11 women. In a statement, the Attorney General says Cuomo's resignation closes a sad chapter for New York, but is an important step forward towards justice. Now, we caught up with political expert Dr. Jeff Bloodworth, who was surprised that Cuomo stepped down so soon. He says he thought the governor was holding out for a deal to protect him from criminal and civil prosecution. And now he's gone. It's, you know, he's just, he's, you know, going to be out of the limelight, and, and thankfully so. I was surprised that, um, that he didn't hold out longer. My, my assumption is, is that um, a governor who resigned can serve on boards and make lots of money to pay off the civil lawsuits a lot more than an impeached governor. And he obviously, and I didn't think he would have, I, I thought he was going to be impeached. 
Now, Bloodworth points out that Cuomo has been involved in the highest level of politics since the early 80s. Well, the Republican members of New York State's Assembly Judiciary Committee are continuing to push to impeach Governor Andrew Cuomo. Six GOP lawmakers on the committee announced their stance this morning in a statement. The reasoning, the members say, is to give New Yorkers access to all the information obtained during their months-long investigation. They say they intend to hold Cuomo accountable on behalf of, quote, his victims, including the 15,000 innocent lives lost in nursing homes. The lawmakers say this has been a tough endeavor, and they strive to bring closure to all of the grieving families. Now, last week at this time, the majority of the state assembly members supported bringing impeachment proceedings against Cuomo if he didn't resign over those investigative findings of sexual harassment. Well, we thank you for joining us for WNY News Now as we continue to cover this. And again, as I mentioned, coming up today at 2 o'clock, Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul expected to speak live and speak with the news media. We'll have a reporter in that news conference and uh, look to provide an update for you uh, online following that live conference, which you can watch live here on WNY News Now. It's uh, great to see uh, Joanna. Good to see Sheila, uh, Kathy, Ray, Pam, and Jason. Hopefully you all are having a great day. Uh, we appreciate you tuning in. Well, now let's get a check of our first weather forecast. Chief forecaster joining us, Dakota Hunter joining us live <laughs> in studio. And the story today, Dakota, really that hot and humid temperatures. Yeah, they don't call it the dog days of summer for nothing. And uh, we've got it going on. Live look over the Randolph Peaches and Cream Sky Cam. 81 is the current air temperature, but look at this dew point at 71 degrees. So when the dew points are in the 70s, it's the air you can wear, and we've got it through the day today, and that's going to continue through at least today and tomorrow. Now, this is uh, the satellite and radar composite on a time lapse because we had a few thunder boomers that came through about uh, 730 this morning. Notice as the loop racks back around, there was a severe thunderstorm warning issued for the northern section of Chautauqua County going up into Erie County that included Brockton and Dunkirk going up into Silver Creek. But as as we uh, kind of show you the rest of the area, pretty much it's dry right now. Nothing going on across the area right now, but we will see another chance for showers and thunderstorms possibly developing through the afternoon. But the main story is the heat. There is now a heat advisory in place for all of Western New York. We told you yesterday I would not be shocked if the Weather Service extended this into the southern tier, and they have. So all of the southern tier until 8 o'clock, uh, basically until 8 o'clock tonight, that means air temperature or the feels like temperatures could be in the mid to upper 90s. So you really have to stay cool out there. Drink water, air conditioning. You know how to do this stuff. You know, you don't need me to tell you those things. 78 yesterday. We didn't make it into the 80s because of the rain and the cloud cover, but we only managed 69 for the low. 95 and 45 are the record highs and lows. So through the afternoon, just another hot and oppressively humid day. Scattered afternoon showers and thunderstorms with some partial sunshine. 84 to 90 will be the high temps today with a southwest wind 10 to 18, but a hot wind doesn't really make it feel that much better. But there is some good news towards the weekend. We'll tell you about it with that seven day forecast later in the show. Justin. Fingers crossed, Mr. Hunter. We'll be tuned to that coming up in 10 minutes. Well, this just into our newsroom. Chautauqua County officials say the COVID-19 Delta variant is likely contributing to increased community spread countywide. Chautauqua County Executive P.J. Wendell and County Public Health Director Christine Schuyler updated us during a morning press conference in Mayville today. The county, Schuyler says, is currently under a substantial level of transmission. That according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. We are assuming that we are seeing the Delta variant here because of the uptick we're seeing in cases. And we know that the state epidemiologist is reporting that 90% of the cases that they are sequencing are the Delta variant. Now, with that in mind, she's asking everybody to wear masks regardless of your vaccination status in high-risk areas like public spaces, following the previously new issued guidance by the CDC. Now, as of yesterday, there are 84 active cases of COVID-19 in the county with five people in the hospital. New York State's fair is making a comeback this year after being canceled due to the pandemic last year. However, it's looking different due to lasting effects from the health crisis. 
Masks are now required to be worn indoors at the state fair. This mandate is put in effect for everyone over the age of two, regardless of their vaccine status. The announcement came down yesterday. The fair takes place over 18 days in Syracuse. It kicks off on August 20th and wraps off on September 6th. Restrictions and mandates are put back into effect as COVID cases have gone up over the last few months. In fact, there have been a 110% increase in new cases in just the last two weeks alone across the state. The fair will still be held at 100% capacity. Well, coming up next, a lot more to tell you about. A vigil took place last night, bringing awareness to a decades-old cold case from here in Jamestown. We hear from that family still searching for answers years later. And later, a behind-the-scene look at a new play space coming to downtown. Stay with us as WNY News Now rolls along on this hot and humid afternoon. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvanna Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. Located along the Amish Trail, the Randolph Retail Company offers a variety of clothing, jewelry, and gifts for any occasion. Offering uptown merchandise at small town prices, our locally owned business balances quality and value. With complimentary gift wrap here at the Randolph Retail Company, we pride ourselves in personal service. Check out our Facebook page or stop in today at 127 Main Street Randolph, just a 20 minute drive from Jamestown. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. Police in Warren County, Pennsylvania are asking for your help in locating a missing 29-year-old woman. Pennsylvania State Police say that Sierra Tandler had last contact with her friends and family via Facebook Messenger on July 29th. She's described as a 5'4", 110-pound white woman with brown hair and blue eyes. She could be driving her silver Jeep Renegade bearing Pennsylvania plates KHY9386. Troopers say she's known to frequent the Pittsfield area. Anyone with information on her whereabouts is asked to call 814-728-3600. Well, the family of a Jamestown mother murdered 17 years ago held a vigil last night honoring her memory and pushing to keep her cold case alive. WNY News Now's Bronson Rasmussen was in attendance and spoke with the family who's pushing to keep that investigation moving forward. Yolanda Bendix's sister, Ann Shimaleski, and niece, Brittany Bendix, hope by raising awareness, new developments might come to light. Today marks 17 years that Yolanda was, technically was the last time we heard from her. We usually do small gatherings every year on the 10th. This year we decided because we keep getting media attention and people to start you know have been coming forward more in addition to spoken remarks the ceremony featured a candle lighting at the time bendix was last seen while the ceremony was short family members were excited for the amount of support received support is important like we really just need people who have information whether it be something tiny it could be something as simple as Oh yeah, I saw so-and-so that day. They seemed a little odd, or I saw a vehicle, or I saw her, or whatever. There's any tiny little thing could potentially lead to an arrest. You just never know. Local law enforcement, including Sheriff Jim Quatrone, also took part, sharing similar viewpoints, not just in this case, but all cold cases. Anytime we have any publicity that's out there, whether it's uh, documentaries, uh, news articles, whatever, it sometimes will 
help individuals remember and uh, point out the importance of reporting it. Sergeant Alex Nutt at the Chautauqua County Sheriff's Office is continuing to seek answers. A $16,000 reward for info is still available. Bronson Rasmussen, WNY News Now. Bronson, thank you. Bendix's story was recently featured in a nationally televised TV show, Still a Mystery, last month. A major step forward in Congress for President Biden's infrastructure plan, the U.S. Senate approved the bipartisan measure, which is one of the most expensive bills in American history. Our Washington, D.C. correspondent Matt Knadler with the story. The A's are 69. The nays are 30. After the months of intense debate, the $1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure package has passed the Senate. The bill will make large and significant differences in both productivity and job creation in America for decades to come. Among the top line numbers inside the 2700 page bill, $110 billion for roads and bridges, $73 billion for electric and power grids, and $65 billion for high-speed internet. The deal includes roughly $550 billion in new spending both Democrats and Republicans say is needed to improve America's aging infrastructure, which received a C- grade earlier this year. There's a cost to not investing, and finally Washington come together and say we've got to invest in our communities. Some Republicans voted against it, arguing the trillion dollar deal is too expensive and citing the Congressional Budget Office report last week that it will add $250 billion to the federal deficit. I have serious reservations. It's a massive amount of spending. In some categories, it's a massive amount on top of massive amounts that were spent just over the last year. The infrastructure bill now faces an uphill battle in the U.S. House. The question there, will enough moderate Democrats support it? And will the progressive wing say it doesn't go far enough? And I don't think it should be attached to anything else, uh, including you know, reconciliation or debt ceiling votes. Uh, that vote should proceed as soon as the Senate finishes its work. After the vote, the Senate began working on the next major spending plan, the three and a half trillion dollar so-called human infrastructure package focusing on education, child care, Medicare expansion, climate change, and more. In Washington, Matt Knadler reporting. Matt, thank you. The act also includes $550 billion in new federal spending over five years. Well, the Jamestown Public School District is seeking your input on their proposed safety plan for this fall. District-wide safety plans are comprehensive, which provide a broad concept policies and procedures, including the number and types of safety drills that will be taking place each year. There have been a number of safety measures already developed. Examples include installing video cameras, the presence of safety officers, which we reported about a few weeks ago, new ID badges that will be worn by staff, and the building, which will be locked during the day. Now, following the public comment period, the plan will be presented to the Board of Education for approval. It can be found online now at jpsny.gov.org forward slash safety plan. Input is continuing through September 9th. Well, we thank you for joining us for WNY News Now. Let us know uh, what you think about these stories and more in the comments down below. Or if you don't have anything to say, simply send us uh, a hello or a wave. And those of you who are watching us and uh, other streaming destinations like uh, WSEE in Erie or on our uh, channel 716 on Roku, we welcome you as well. It's uh, great to see Christy. Good to see uh, Diane, uh, Wendy, Dan, and Carol. Hopefully you all are having a uh, wonderful day out there. We appreciate you tuning in. Uh, well, now let's get a full check of our weather forecast. And the story today is the hot and the humidity that's out there. Dakota, we were joking as we walked out the building yesterday. It's the air you can wear. Well, today it's the air that you are wearing, really. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It's the air you can wear and the air you're wearing right now. And the graphic that we've got right now actually sums that up. So this is a graphic that we've had before, but we've kind of updated it with emojis because, of course, everybody talks in emojis. Yeah, so I love I mean, emojis. Yes. Woo. Who doesn't love emojis? So when the dew points in the 40s and the 50s, it's comfortable. When it gets into the 60s, that's when you feel the stick. And we're here in the 70s for the dew point. So it's just sticky icky. Normally I wear a jacket, but it's too gosh darn hot. So please forgive me for no jacket because it's just too hot for that. And uh, what about there me? you go. Oh gonna, Justin's bringing off, sexy back. Actually speaking, actually speaking of Justin, <laughs> it was Justin Timberlake who actually sung that song. So Justin's he bringing did, yeah. sexy back. 
the awesome Justins of the world. Yes, the awesome Justins, the awesome Justins, and there's some awesome Dakotas out there as there well. Are. Some might I'm be watching. At one right now. Yeah, some might be watching right now. The HD News Now cam shows you just a few puffy white clouds after that rain moved through. 84 as a noon hour at the Jamestown Airport. Healthy southwest wind to 16, but look at that dew point at 71. That creates a heat index of 83 degrees or a heat index of 83 degrees. That's what it feels like when you step outside right now. And uh, the heat index forecast is basically showing it to you here. This is the hour by hour forecast through the day. We'll likely peak around 88 or uh, uh, 98 degrees degrees for the heat index today. So again, you have to take it easy out there. So again, water, hydrate yourself, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. That's the main thing. And uh, it will back off a little bit. And uh, there is a heat advisory in place for all of the Southern tier until eight o'clock tonight. So again, just stay cool. You guys know how to stay cool out there. Air conditioning, hydrate, all that stuff. Now there is a low end chance of a couple stronger storms this afternoon. Storm Prediction Center has us under a marginal risk, a level one out of five for today. And they maintain that risk for tomorrow. And I do think tomorrow will be the better chance for at least catching a couple stronger storms through the afternoon and we'll show you the newest run of future scan here in a minute. Nothing showing up locally on uh, First Defense Doppler but let's take you down into Ohio because these storms now are just starting to cross the uh, OHPA border and these are kind of moving east northeast so they're kind of moving like this. They may clip up uh, the they may move up into Crawford County uh, Pennsylvania within the uh, next hour or two. We'll have to watch those as they move on in. So here's the newest run of future scan and it doesn't really paint much activity through the afternoon but there will be a couple spotty showers and or thunder showers popping up through the afternoon and it's just going to be gosh darn hot and humid through the afternoon that's really the main story now that clears out for the overnight then tomorrow we may get a few showers and storms early then this is why i think the better chance for stronger storms will be tomorrow notice how the model pops up these stronger storms through the afternoon hours tomorrow so we'll have to watch those this is going to be late morning early afternoon and we we may see a few more scattered showers and thunderstorms developing through the nighttime hours on Thursday going into Friday and Friday is going to be a big weather changer for us and you'll see it in a second. So through the afternoon, it's hot and humid. What a surprise with scattered afternoon showers and thunderstorms. Look at Titty Ute, maybe getting close to 90 degrees, both in Titty Ute and Warren. The next seven days of your life are right here. Now a strong storm possible on Thursday, 85. Friday, a cold front comes our way, but it doesn't cross until later in the afternoon. So that 85 will likely be early in the day. Then everybody say it with me. Ah on Saturday and Sunday. We don't think the weekend weather is going to change much and then we're back to some sticky air as we go into early next week. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. Honorary Forest Ranger Betty White here, lending a hand to my dear friend Smokey Bear. Because for years, he's only said, Only you can prevent wildfires. But there's a lot more to say. Like, if you park your car on tall, dry grass, the hot exhaust pipe can start a wildfire. So keep the animals safe, especially the cute shirtless one. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. It's not just what we say, it's what we do. Local first, it isn't just our slogan. It's our mindset every single day. So whether you're watching our daily live streams or staying up to date with reports on our website and mobile app, you'll always see the same attention to detail from reporters who passionately care about our community, who have one goal in mind, to always put the facts first. For me, it's more than just getting the forecast right. What I love the most about my job is that I come into work every day to help break down the weather, letting people know how this is going to impact their day. We take pride that First Defense Weather is the only local weather team in the Southern Tier. We don't just copy and paste our weather from outside sources. Every part of our forecast is handmade right here in-house, something our team really takes pride in. What matters to you matters to us. Every story, every day. WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. Testicular cancer is the leading form of cancer in men aged 15 to 35. One in 250 men will be diagnosed with testicular cancer. 
but 98% will survive if detected early. As a survivor, I believe early detection is the key. Learn how to do a testicular self-exam and other important facts about testicular cancer at oneball4tc.com. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. After the completion of a $4.5 million renovation project at the Northwest Arena in Jamestown, work is set to begin soon on an interactive play space for kids 2 to 12. The zone is part of a downtown revitalization effort aiming to lower barriers of play, offering engaging sport-themed experiences that encourages the development of physical skills and mental stimulation. Julia Gress with more on what this play space will feature and where fundraising goals sit. This will be a wonderful opportunity for our local kids and we're excited about that. Yes, it's going to bring economic impact for people coming from outside of the area, but we're going to be able to give our local kids a place to play. That's Northwest Arena Executive Director Keith Martin, who tells us The Zone aims to build upon the center's 20 years of activism to help further the availability of local youth recreation and athletics. Kids who live below the poverty line, uh, they are seven times more likely likely than their upper class counterparts to receive no active play per day. Uh, so we hope that the zone will help change that state of play in western New York. In addition to state-of-the-art climbing structures, people-powered games, and other in-person activities to get kids moving, Arena Director of Marketing Megan Arnon explains that technology is a big part of the imaginative play design. We intentionally use technology here at the zone Every bit is meant to inspire them um, creatively, to make them play longer, to make them play harder, to make connections with other guests, and to be a little bit competitive. The new wing of the downtown arena, Martin says, is the combination of expansion on several fronts. We do have, you know, the, the ice sports and th things like that, but now we're, we're the community center for activities. I mean, and that goes back to, you know, the backyard curling, the bu ice bumper cars, the DJ skates, and, and all that. It's not just skating. In addition to the projected benefit to area youth, Leaders at the arena say the expansion will create positive economic impacts as well. And we hope that the zone encourages families to stay downtown longer, maybe to choose to stay overnight in Jamestown. With $4.5 already pledged and the physical expansion complete, the effort to build the zone project is now seeking $4 million in charitable investment to bring the proposed fixtures and exhibits to life. Julia Gress, WNY News Now. Julia, thank you. Interesting project that they have proposed there. Let us know uh, what you guys think about in the comments uh, down below. Uh, I, I think it's really great when you look at it, Dakota. Um, we're finally getting a first look into that building, which has been complete for quite a while there, that, that really big expansion at the Northwest Arena. But the biggest challenge I'd imagine for kids here locally is playing during the winter, which when mm -hmm. you look at the zone, it you know, you can do that all year round. Safe yep. and cool in the air conditioning during the summer, and then you have a nice place to play in the winter because, you know, a lot of times when it's, what, snowing, you're not going to go play on a playground or something right. like that. So. Well, I mean, unless your kid likes to go down a hill. Right. You in, can slide in, and in, sled. Yeah, in like, like a homemade great, sled or something. Great but, hills. Allen Park, one of them. But right. Nevertheless. But, you know, in terms of the winter, it's like, you know, kids, especially the younger kids, you know, if you're not really into doing stuff like that or, you know, winter sports or whatever, it does get boring around right. the winter months because oh, yeah. you're cooped up inside thinking like, what Video am I going to do? Yeah. And so, you know, the zone kind of reminds me of like a children's arcade. And uh, so, you know, I just wish we would have had this back when I was a kid because right. it would have made my childhood a lot happier. That's but, true. But 20 years, can you believe the arena's been around for 20 years yeah. already? Yeah, huge I stable. remember when they were building it. Yeah, me I too. Mean, it, it, a huge construction project, and, and now they, they have this huge renovation. Um, certainly, we'll continue to follow this as it moves forward to, to see as things come to uh, fruition. But let's get a uh, final look at our weather forecast. And uh, is there going to be any relief temperature-wise tonight, maybe? Well, no. No. Uh, let's go in there and take a look at it. So through the overnight tonight, 71 
to 77. It's going to be another air conditioners on kind of night, partly cloudy, but there will be some scattered showers or storms arriving towards the morning hours. So it's going to be another uncomfortable night for sleeping. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, definitely. If you don't have an air conditioner, I am really, really, really sorry. That's that's for sure. It's tough sleeping weather, but mm. I, I know relief will come eventually. And we'll get there. You just got to get through these next couple of days and we'll be there. Absolutely. All right, Dakota, thank you. That's it for us. We'll leave you with a live look over Randolph. Have a great day. We're back here tomorrow. Hope to see you then.